Hey everyone, this is Andy from Giz China, and uh, today I'm looking at the Meizu MX4 Pro. Uh, we received this yesterday after the MX4 Pro launch in Beijing, and I've just arrived in Shenzhen. Just got enough time to do a hands-on and first impressions after a, nearly a day of use. So uh, first of all, we've got a, a much bigger phone this time around. Compared to the MX4, the MX4 Pro is longer and wider, and that's to accommodate the larger 5.5-inch display and also this M-Touch fingerprint scanner built into a sapphire glass button. If I just bring in the MX4 just for a size comparison, you can see that the MX4 is slightly shorter, and you can't really see here on the video, but it is slightly narrower too. The MX4 has narrower bezels as well, as well as the 5.35 inch display. So the MX4 Pro is a larger phone, but luckily, means you have made a few changes to Flyme, Flyme 4.1, which make it a little easier to handle even one-handed. Okay, let's have a look at the specifications on the front of the phone. So I've already mentioned that there's a fingerprint scanner beneath this sapphire glass button. This uh, fingerprint scanner activates uh, once you hit it, once you press it, it'll read your fingerprint and may as you say it takes around 500 milliseconds to recognize your fingerprint and decide whether you're who you say you are or not and decide to unlock the screen. I'll show you that in action in a moment. Above that we've got this 5.5 inch display and it's a 2K display with a resolution of 2560-1536. So it's got a really, really high pixel ratio and uh, Meizu again claim that it's one of the best in the market so far. And at the top we've got a 5 megapixel camera which is a big improvement over the camera on the Meizu MX4. So if you like to take selfies you'll certainly enjoy it with this new camera. And also there's some new uh, face beautification software built in too. Okay, before I, we take a look actually at Flyme 4.1 and some of the other features, let's take a look around the sides and the back of the phone. So you can see that the design overall is very similar to the Meizu MX4. It's just larger like I've already mentioned. We've got the same polished bezel on the, uh, the edges of the phone. And we go around to a aluminium chassis which is exposed all the way around. And we've got these machine areas for the micro SD speaker and microphone. You can see we've just got a small area there. We've got a replace, a removable, sorry, uh, rear panel which is made of plastic, which I'll show you in a moment. On the left-hand side, we've got a volume rocker, and at the top, we've got a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and a power button. Uh, on the rear, it looks very, very similar to the Meizu MX4. I'll just bring the Meizu MX4 in again. Um, the Pro is a lighter shade of silver, whereas the MX4 is a darker grey. Um, other than that though, they're very similar. They both got the same Sony 20.7 megapixel camera and they've both got dual tone, dual LED flashes. If I just take the rear off the Meizu MX4 Pro, just peel it off like you do on the MX4, and inside we've got a 3350 mAh battery, we've got space for a single SIM card, and um, there's no room for micro SD, so uh, you're better off choosing the biggest capacity you can afford. The one that I'm uh, testing here is a 32 gigabyte. There's also a 16 gigabyte version too. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head, but there could be larger models too. I think there's also a 64 gigabyte. On the rear of the panel, there's an NFC chip which was missing on the MX4. So now you can still sync with your uh, NFC uh, accessories and share data with other NFC enabled phones. Okay, I'll put the rear back on. Okay, so um, now I've already set up the fingerprint scanner. I'll run through that with you in a moment. So the idea is if I press this button now, it should easily read my fingerprint or my thumbprint and unlock. So I just press it, let go, and as you can see, it's unlocked. Now you might think I'm cheating and I've just uh, set it up to open up by pressing the button, but actually that's how fast it is. The security on the phone is uh, that fast. I'll just show, prove it to you if I just lock the screen. If I just hit it once and I try to unlock it, it asked me for a password. So even if the uh, fingerprint scanner doesn't recognize you on the first press, you can you know, either try again or if it continues to fail, you can always use a uh, passcode as a backup. So I'll just open that up again. And there you go. It's quite fast. So you've got to, um, when you first get the phone, um, you need to set it up, and I'll show you that in a moment. And when you use the fingerprint scanner, you've got to press it down, hold it a little bit, and let go and then it will recognize your uh, fingerprint and unlock. So here we have it, we have Flyme 4.1 on the MX4 Pro and this is based on Android 4.4.4 .4 .4. 
you can see I've on 18% of power. Um, that's basically because I've not charged it since I got this phone. So it just came out of the box and I've run it from uh, around, I can't remember, around 6 o'clock yesterday and now it's uh, 12 o'clock in the morning and I have not turned it off. So the battery is still going and I've been running 3G GPS and other bits and bobs, taking lots of photos. But we'll do a proper battery test on the full review. Um, Fly Me 4.1 on the Mazer MX4 has been changed a little bit. There are a few more features in here uh, to make it a little bit easier to handle. If I just show you on the notifications area, we've got some new toggles. One of them is this Smart Touch button. I've already enabled it. And basically what Smart Touch lets you do is uh, set up this small white dot. I'm sure you can just see it. It's in between the settings, documents, gallery, and messages, this white dot here. You can move it around, set it up where you want. So I can move it over here if I like. But because I'm using my right hand mostly to use this phone, I've got it there. Now the idea with this is, with this Smart Touch button, I can access all my previously used applications that are running in the background without having to go into the task manager at the bottom. So I should be able to just swipe, there we go, from one to the other. And that will bring up what I've been using in the past. So you can see I've been using the maps, the settings to get onto the Wi-Fi. I've just called someone and uh, there we go. It should go back again one more. Oh, okay, it won't go back again, sir, because that's the actual setting, the uh, home screen. To go back, as usual, just like the Meizu MX4 and the 3, we can still swipe up to go back out of things, or we can just hit the home button. So we've got a few more features here. I have one feature which is quite interesting, because the MX4 Pro is a 5.5 inch phone, it's a larger phone, you can obviously, I can't reach up here, it's, it's pretty far, I, even stretching, I'm not going to get up there unless I've got huge hands. So uh, what we can do, we can double tap and that will bring everything down here. Now I can easily get to everything with what one hand. So one handed operation is really well thought out on here. I can get over to the calendar from here, I can bring that down, I can press over onto the two. Uh, it's you know it's really quite clever. It's a neat little feature. A little bit ugly to have this white dot on the screen all times, but uh, it's an interesting feature and it, it does really help things. All right, what else do we have? Uh, I'll go into the settings. Um, settings hasn't really changed all that much, but you can see that we've got a fingerprint uh, set up here. We can set our fingerprints up on here. I already have two fingerprints set up, so I can either use my right thumb or my left thumb to unlock the phone. And I'll just show you how to uh, set up a phone, a uh, fingerprint. So, one moment, if I just go in here. I have to put my passcode in. I'm going to move off screen because this is my actual real passcode. And we can add a fingerprint. There we go. It tells you here in English what you need to do. You, basically what you need to do is you need to touch the home button until it vibrates and let go. Keep doing that until a full fingerprint is built up and then the fingerprint should be stored away. And it also mentions here that all your information is encrypted so don't worry about any data getting uh, caught or anything even if someone was able to hack into your phone by downloading a fake fingerprint or whatever and tr trying to trick your phone your uh, all your data is encrypted so it should be quite safe so I'll just show you how to set this up so as soon as I touch it we get this new fingerprint screen up on here and it tells me to rest my thumb on here and I keep doing it and what you got to do while you're doing this you've got to move your thumb position around a little bit as well and that helps your uh, M touch sensor on your phone to get a good idea of your thumbprint all over and not just a small portion of it. So I'll keep doing that for you. You can see that the message will wobble when I'm not moving it enough for it to get the right parts. And we've almost done. There you go, and it's finished. And that's it. So once that's done, I've got three fingerprints in there now. I should be able to lock the screen and unlock it like that. So it's really nice. It's a really neat feature. It's very, very fast. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really cool. Now, um, one thing that many people have already commented on is this home button, this rectangle home button, where the fingerprint scanner is. And, uh, yeah, some people think it's quite ugly, a little bit Samsung. Um, I, speaking with Meizu, I actually asked them why they chose the rectangle shape. And they've telling me that basically, if you use, uh, if they use a, a more oval shape, which have, which have been more beautiful to look at, the actual area, the sensor area for your fingerprint would have been too small to be too, to be accurate. So, you know, they didn't want to go for a circle because that would have extended the phone size 
and the rectangle was a good comp compromise. So uh, yeah, I mean to have accurate security seems like a good reason to go for a rectangle button to me. Okay, other features we've got. We've got the Google Play Store in here. This is the international ROM, so it's good to see we've got Google Play built in. Because I'm in China, I can't access Google Play. I can't log in. Um, I can't put a VPN on here either to do it, so I'll have to set all that up when I'm outside of China. Um, one more thing before I uh, just leave it at that. We've got the settings again. And if I just go down to accessibility, and we've got gesture wake up at the top there. We've got some new gestures to wake the phone up. Uh, you can see we've got double tap, slide. We can also now write or paint letters onto the screen. Uh, and this is very similar to ColorOS's gesture set, uh, system. So we can uh, you know, write a W to open up, for example, WeChat, an E for the internet browser. We can draw a circle for the camera. Now, the thing is, this is a really good feature. But remember, if you do have your fingerprint set scanner set up, even with the black screen gestures, not all of these uh, features will work. The camera does work. I can draw a circle and my camera will open and it will allow me to take photos. But because the security is enabled, I won't be able to look at the gallery. Um, if, if, for example, you set up E for email, if your fingerprint scanner is set up, you would draw an E and then it would ask you for your fingerprint to access the phone. So you do have these uh, quick gestures, but again, you've got to choose. What do you want, security or ease of uh, entry? And in that case, I suppose really there's nothing Meizu can do. But um, overall, the actual fingerprint scanner is a fast and easy way to get in there. Uh, anything else? Oh, the music player. Now, the music player hasn't changed so much, but the music uh, audio system has been updated. And what we've got now if I just find it, we've got this hi-fi sound and it won't show anything here, I can't choose any of these options because there's no headphones plugged in. Now if there were headphones plugged in, the idea is that the uh, the new uh, operating amplifiers and the uh, audio uh, processors which Meizu have used on the MX4 Pro would be able to recognize the best settings for the headphones or earphones that I've plugged in and they should set it up correctly for me. So you can see auto is already checked there. Um, if you d decided you didn't like the quality of the sound that was coming out on auto, you could choose low get gain, high gain, or line out to you know manually choose your settings. Um, audio on the MX4 Pro, uh, at the moment I've only used some old Meizu EP21 headphones, not the new HD. And I can say the music quality is pretty good. Um, it's not quite on par with, say, a Vivo X-Shot, um, but it's good. It's pretty good. But what I will do, um, again, because I've only been using it for a, a few hours now, I will do a full review and I'll do a side-by-side -side listening of music between the Vivo and this with the same headphones and see which one performs best. And anything else before we go? We have... I think that's about it. Uh, the camera on the MX4 Pro is exactly the same, uh, with a few uh, little tweaks on the ISP and there to the MX4. The setup, the the uh, UI and everything is exactly the same, so there's no surprises there. And camera quality, the image quality is really quite good though. Even night shots again, really impressive. So there we go, that's about it for now for the MX4 Pro. This is our first hands-on with the phone. I'll continue to use it over the next few weeks and days and I'll continue to update, add new videos and also do a full review. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that and uh, if you have any comments or questions, please let us know. Cheers and see you soon. Bye-bye.